Okay, so we're going to do a problem here. We're going to solve uh, for different sides using the geometric mean leg theorem and the geometric mean altitude theorem. So first what we see is that we have a right triangle. A red square here shows me that we have a red triangle. We also see here that side Y, since it's perpendicular to the hypotenuse, that is considered my altitude. So I want to know how do I find y and how do I find x. First I'm going to start with y. So if I'm looking for y, this is an altitude. So I'm going to use the geometric mean altitude theorem. And what does that mean? Well my altitude is going to split my hypotenuse into two pieces. And that altitude is the geometric mean of those two pieces. So what are the two pieces? I see this is 2, but look what this is. 8 is my hypotenuse. So in order to find this leg here, I have to say 8 minus 2 is 6. So I see that this piece over here is 6. So what am I going to do? Y I said is the geometric mean. My definition of a geometric mean is the square root of the two numbers. The geometric mean of 2 and 6 is the square root of 2 times 6. So I have the square root of 12, which is y. y equals the square root of 12. But I can break this apart. What can I break it apart into? Well, we see that it was 6 and 2. Is there a square root of 6? No. Is there a square root of 2? No. So that's why I combined. Now, what's inside of 12? Well, besides 2 and 6, what else goes into 12? 4 and 3. Now, is this helpful? That's the first question. I only break it apart if it's helpful. Is there a square root of 4? There is. That's helpful. So. I say y equals the square root of 4 times the square root of 3 because I have to know my rules for square roots. What's the square root of 4? I know the square root of 4 is 2. So y equals 2 square root of 3. And I'm done. I can't break down 3 anymore. So I figured out that y is 2 square root of 3. So now I'm going to move on and I need to solve for x. How do I find the square root of x? Well, x is a leg. And my geometric mean leg theorem says that a leg of a right triangle is the geometric mean of the hypotenuse and the portion of the hypotenuse that's cut because of the altitude. So what portion is next to the x? Is it the 2? No, this is way over adjacent to this leg. 6 is what's adjacent here. So I'm going to have x is the geometric mean, the square root of the hypotenuse. I always use the hypotenuse for my leg theorem, which is 8, times 6, which is the portion of the hypotenuse split by the altitude and it's adjacent to x, so times 6. Now, I can break these apart, or I can combine them. Let's go ahead and combine them. What's 8 times 6? 8 times 6 is 48. So I have the square root of 48. Now, what can I break this apart into? Well, I'm going to save some time, but I know that the square root of 16 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 48. And I do this because I know that there's a square root of 16, which is what? It's 4. So this equals 4 square root of 3. Now, going back to this problem here, what if I didn't know? What if I didn't see that 16 goes into 48? Could I have done this differently? Well, let's look at the 8 and the 6, and let's break those apart right away. So if I say x is equal to, what goes into 8? Well, I know it's 4 and 2. So 4 
square root of 2. What goes in to 6? I know 2 and square root of 3. So I have 4 times 2 is 8, 2 times 3 is 6. What's the square root of 4? I know the square root of 4 is 2. Now, there's a couple different ways to look at this middle one. Square root of 2 times square root of 2. Some people will say a square root of 4. What is the square root of 4? That's 2. But also, we can say the square root of something times itself is going to be that number. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. So whether we say square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4, I get 2. Or if I know that two square roots of the same number are going to be that number. And square root of 3 stays the same. And 2 times 2 is 4. So x equals 4 square root of 3. And I say I got the same number two slightly different ways, but I was able to get to it either way. So this is a sample problem of how to find a leg or an altitude using the geometric mean leg theorem and the geometric mean altitude theorem.